This week's video is mostly about packing. Welcome to my channel, Flourish Faith and Fiber. So glad to have you join me and uh, seeing all the different things that I have been working on or in this case, hearing about them because um, one of them isn't gonna be revealed until the middle of May. Um, but also uh, just uh, walking with me through the book of Luke as well. And that will come at the end of the video. As I always say, I am so grateful to have every one of you here with me. Those that subscribe, those that are watching regularly, those of you that uh, have just found my videos. I hope that you are blessed by them, enjoy them, and uh, will consider uh, subscribing. And don't forget, I really appreciate the thumbs up as well. And always love to hear your comments. Uh, all the ways that you can connect with me and my email are in the description box below. Uh, so we're going to get started with the projects that I have been working on. So I have been working on a collab. It's called Hashtag Hooking Up With Books. And we have been reading uh, the book called The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. And um, so, in, so we started reading in mid-March, March 15th. And the collab for this book ends on May 15th. And so around the middle of May, I will put out a video that talks about the book, more about the book and the, the projects. Uh, there's actually two, the projects that I did uh, and the yarn I used. I did mention it in last week's video that I will put a link to up here and you can catch that. So I'm not showing it because uh, I am waiting for the collab for this particular book to be finished uh, and all the reveal videos that go out uh, May 15th or around May 15th. Uh, I have been though working on another collab called um, hashtag mix and match challenge 2020. Four. So the previous collab that I mentioned, the book, Hooking Up With Books, is put out by um, Caroline at Caroline for the Love of Crochet and Cassandra at Craftably Ever After. The collab Mix and Match Challenge 2024 is also done by Cassandra at Craftably Ever After. And so she had people uh, send in drawings of a any kind of drawing. I was gonna say animal, but I don't know that it necessarily had to be an animal. And um, you could get your children, your grandchildren, you yourself, turn in a drawing and then it the we all voted and the one that won in the votes is the amigurumi that we will be making. And the winner was a white cat in blue overalls with a mushroom hat. That was the drawing that won. And so we are all making, those who are participating are making a cat in overalls with a mushroom hat. And the reason it's called Mix and Match Challenge is because uh, you may not find one single pattern that covers all of those elements. That is being a cat, being in overalls, blue overalls, and with a mushroom hat. And so you may have to pull from different patterns to create this amigurumi. And so I started working on the cat. Now my cat is a 
is an orange cat. It does have some white uh, highlights in it. And so I'll show you what I have gotten done so far. So I got, oh, and by the way, the pattern is from Amigurumi Today. Uh, if you sign up with your email, then, and they do send out newsletters, but not often at all. It's like maybe once a week, maybe not. Whenever, usually it's whenever they have new patterns come up on their website, they will send out an email notification to let you know. So that's where I got this pattern from, and I will put a picture of what it's supposed to look like, the cat pattern here. And this is what I have gotten done so far. So I have gotten the feet, and I love the feet. If you can see the little toes are so cute. It was my first time to put toes on an amigurumi. And so you do the legs and then you go into the body. You do the head separately. I was considering, because the body ends, I think it was 24 stitches around and the head also ends with 24 stitches around, so they will match. But I thought about just continuing and decided no, because your starting circle is on the top and the ears are gonna go on either side. They won't cover that starting circle. And the starting circle uh, versus the ending circle is so much nicer. So I decided to go ahead and just sew the neck on. I don't think you can, it, it doesn't look terrible. So yeah, so uh, this is the body. I have also finished the arms and oh, as you can see, the white is the feet and the hands. And again, this was my first time to put a thumb on. And I also finished the little part that is gonna be sewn onto the tummy of the cat. And so it is also going to be white. So there you go. So an orange cat with some white pieces. Now I thought about not doing this because the overalls will cover, but I thought, well, uh, if the pants part ends around here and then the bib part is up here, you can actually see the white a little bit through the bib. So I went ahead and decided to add that white detail on. The other thing I realized is when I put, I'm gonna hold them up here, but when I put the arms on, that he doesn't have much shoulder to hold up uh, the straps on overalls. So I might have to tack them down, which means that you won't be able to take the overalls on and off, but, um, but that's okay. Uh, at least they will stay up and won't be slipping down his arms because yeah, once you get those sewn on, not much of shoulder to hold up the overalls, but um, yeah, I think he'll, he'll turn out really cute. I followed the pattern as was written. Oh, and by the way, I did start the tail. Uh, so I'm working on the tail and then I need to finish the ears. So uh, I followed the pattern, as I said, I thought about changing the neckline uh, or going straight to the head, but I decided not to, as was written in the pattern. The only thing I did change was because I wasn't hiding the uh, jog between the colors. So I, the jog is kind of in the back side so that it doesn't show from the front. So I did do the second leg backwards, um, or I attached it backwards so that the jog and put the toes on, uh, yeah, and I guess what would have been the back is where I put the toes so that that jog would end up on the inside of the legs. And so, which meant 
that when I got to the increases for his cute little uh, belly, that I um, had to rework the stitch count for the increases because otherwise the increases would have been on the back side of him and he would have had a bum, not a belly, I don't know. But anyway, I just reworked where those increases would be placed. Uh, but the rest of the pattern is, uh, or the rest of the way I did it is just as the pattern calls for. So, and that is the cat I am working on. I hope to have it finished by the end of April. I wanted to have the cat part done and all the stuffing inside of it so that I could put the polyfill onto or in the crate, which will go onto the ship uh, that will ship everything back to us. And so, um, yeah, so uh, wanted to have that, that part done. I need to mention the yarn that I used. So this is um, what's left of the orange yarn that I am using. This is what, <clears throat> sorry, this is what I have left of the white that I am using. And it is a South African yarn called Venus Colors. I know it's backwards. I can tell it's backwards, but it's called Venus Colors. And uh, the colorway is white and the other colorway is orange. Very creative names. It is 100% cotton DK weight yarn. And I just wanna read the back of the label because it's amazing. It says, this yarn is hand dyed and balled by women from an economically depressed rural area of South Africa. The sale of this product has empowered them and brought economic benefits to their community. Hand dyed yarn, um, something, your garment, oh, gives your garment a unique marbled effect and it is colored fast, made in South Africa. So um, love the yarn, it is working up very nice. It's very soft, makes a great soft amigurumi. Um, so yeah, so that's the yarn I'm using for the mushroom hat, for the over, well, for the overalls, I am using the same yarn, just in a blue. But for the mus mushroom hat, I may be using a different uh, yarn, haven't figured that one out, but we'll let you know in next week's video. And so that was my big project. I have not gotten far, much farther on my husband's socks. I think I've gotten about 20, 25 more rounds on the foot. Uh, I think I have about less than 20 to go before I have to do the toe decreases. So I'm getting there, but because of all the packing and sorting and things like that, I uh, done a lot of that this week and basically done all crocheting and knitting in the evenings when we're relaxing after dinner and watching TV or when I watch and try to catch up on all my YouTube videos. And so, um, yeah, so that is what has been happening. I will put up videos here uh, before we get to the devotion, the Bible study devotion, uh, I'll put up pictures or videos of walking through what I have done so far in, uh, getting the house ready for, um, yeah, moving out, shipping as well as selling and giving things away. And so, yeah, so I'll put that here. So I've sorted through all our board games and these are ones we're giving away. A few knickknacks, decorations, tons of DVDs to give away and then a few CDs. <laughs> then in our bedroom, clothes and shoes for giveaway, all of these books and more little knickknack decorations that I I'm giving away, that's all been sorted. And then in my son's old room, which became my craft room, 
uh, gave away my desk and this is all so far the things that are being put in our crate uh, back to the US, including that table over uh, right there, uh, that folding table. So yeah, so getting it all together, I have yarn in this that I have to pack up and into those boxes right down there. So yeah, trying to get it all together and sorted. Fun times, and that's what I've been up to this week. All right, so we're gonna do uh, our Bible study now. So our uh, passage comes from Luke chapter 14, verses 25 to uh, 33. And this is what it says. Now, great crowds were traveling with him, Jesus. So he turned and said to them, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, wanting to build a tower, doesn't first sit down and calculate the cost to see if he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, after he has laid the foundation and cannot finish it, all the onlookers will begin to ridicule him, saying, This man started to build and wasn't able to finish. Or what king going to war against another king will not first sit down and decide if he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If not, while the others are still far off, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. In the same way, therefore, every one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. And so as I was reading in different versions and um, just contemplating going over the four questions of Discovery Bible Study, this is what stood out for me about God. He desires our whole heart. He must be Lord, like ruler, like master, uh, the leader, the teacher of our lives. I don't think he's saying that you absolutely hate your family. What he is saying is that your love for him, your desire to follow him should be way above your love which sometimes is hard to imagine for other people. You know, I think about my husband and my children, my parents, I love them dearly, but my love for them should pale in comparison to my love for God and my desire to be obedient and follow him. And when I was looking it up, the word disciple is a pupil, like a student, a follower, an adherent. It means they cling to the uh, teachings or the doctrines of someone else. They are devoted and they believe what that person that they're devoted to uh, is teaching. Um, and so they must believe with their whole heart in order to follow. They must um show in their actions, what they say, what they do must also reveal their heart towards that person. And in this case, towards God. God knows what is best for us. He is the creator. He created us, all the intricacies in our little bodies. He created the whole universe and put it in order so that those of you that were in the States, in the right part of the States, could see a total eclipse this past week. He put 
all of that together. He knows how the universe and all the things that he created should run and should run best. He knows best. And he also, on top of that, loves us more than any person, any other God that you would worship. He, Yahweh, the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, loves us more and wants what's best. He knows what's best and he wants what is best for us and he is the best for us. So you may ask, how do I know that? And it is because of reading God's word and actually going through Discovery Bible Study questions as I am studying at, in my alone time, in my prayer time and all of that, I contemplate who God is. That's how I know that he is the best. His character shows that he is the best. He is just, he is righteous, and he loves us dearly. Um, I became a believer, but I grew up in the church, became a believer when I was 18, and I am 59 this year. So I have uh, been walking with the Lord, um, trying to be faithful. Uh, not always perfect, obviously, I'm a human, uh, but in learning more about him and loving him more. Uh, I also see in this passage, one of the things that really stood out for me is that Jesus gives it to them straight. We finished last week, which um, ended with the, the parable of this great banquet. And we finished with uh, somebody saying, wow, how blessed are people who get to be in the banquet, uh, get to celebrate and see the return of Jesus. But in this one, Jesus is saying, this comes right afterwards, and he is saying, look, it may be a great thing, but there is a cost to following me, and you need to weigh if you are willing to count that cost. It's not going to be easy, is what he says. The, the building of the house, the preparing an army, it is not going to be easy. You will face opposition, but you need to, to think through it and see if you are really willing to follow him. And so we love the idea of banquets, um, but one thing I know about people, we don't love the idea of crosses. And so Jesus tells it to the people straight that it's not going to be easy. Uh, then other things that uh, I learned about people is that because of that, because of Jesus telling them that life is not going to be easy, you are going to take up your cross, you are going to be persecuted, that we need to really think about salvation. It is just, it is not just fire insurance uh, keeping us out of hell. Um, following Jesus is a sacrifice. And um, it reminds me of, so when we were getting ready to come to South Africa, to Johannesburg, it is a dangerous city. There is a lot of crime. Um, and not, not so much that like we walk out the door and um, bad things are happening. We can go to shops, we can go to malls, there's, there's great amenities, it's very westernized but it is a dangerous city. And so uh, the man that was preparing us during our training time in the U.S. before we moved overseas kept saying, you know, giving us the horror stories. You know, this this happens, there is crime. You know, you, you will get broken into, you could, there could be carjackings, you could be kidnapped. There could, I mean, he went into all sorts of things. Are you sure you wanna go? And I think he was doing the same thing in this, in a sense that Jesus is doing in this story. And that is saying, you need to think long and hard because it's not going to be easy. And we have loved Johannesburg for 24 years, still love it, even though we are moving, still love it dearly and want to see um, many people 
across the city come to know the Lord as their Savior. But uh, it, it reminded me that he was making sure that we were sure we wanted to be here. And Jesus is making sure that people really do want to follow him. Um, and so how can then as followers, we stand firm in our faith? And obviously, you know, I'm going to say, be in God's word. Think about what does the passage say about God, people, and how can I obey? Be in the word daily. And don't be blinded. Listen to Jesus. Don't be blinded to what you want, the big banquet, the nice life. Don't be blinded to the realities that following him is going to be a challenge. It's not going to be easy. And it doesn't take us out of the sin, the effects that sin has caused in the world, like sickness, poverty, things like that. And uh, so don't be blind, be in God's word daily and pray without ceasing. I have seen God answer so many prayers. One of those is something as simple as we cannot take our sweet little Jack Russell dogs with us. And we have someone considering taking them. And if they don't, we have someone lined up ready. And I've been praying for that. And he's answered that. And so pray to God. Lift up your request to him. Pray that he will reveal himself to you so that you will love him more, know him more, and be able to stand firm in your faith more. Um, and I think that's what helps us when those difficult times come. So uh, be willing, stand firm, be willing to take up your cross. And for those of you that are not believers, even though it is not the best life now and, and God doesn't promise wealth and health and peace he gives you deep inner peace. He gives me fullness of joy, even in the difficult times. Uh, so really get to know God through his word. And I pray that you, if you don't know him as Lord and Savior, would. Um, because even though it is difficult, it, the relationship with Jesus is amazing. And uh, I would want that for you. Let me close in prayer. Lord, thank you for your word to us. I pray that you would help us to meditate on what we have learned, what we have read, uh, meditate on your word through the week. I pray that um, we would always turn to you uh, during struggles and just trust in you. Thank you um, for your love for us and for knowing that you are the best for us. And I pray that you, uh, your spirit would help us to follow you as best we can. Thank you that you forgive us when we don't. Uh, but yeah, give us wisdom, help us to know you deeper and follow you um, more closely. And I pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. I thank you again for joining me. And I hope you have a wonderful week. We will see you again next week. Uh, my house may be a little more empty than, and I may still be in this setting next week, but I hope you all have a wonderful week. Bye-bye, y'all.